Louis DeJoy is still Postmaster General. How much longer are you planning to stay? A uh, long time. Get used to me. This needs to be a national scandal. Just last week, DeJoy's destructive 10-year plan for the post office took effect, which would permanently slow mail delivery, hike prices for consumers, and speed up the privatization of the postal service. Meanwhile, DeJoy's conflicts of interest have only deepened. XPO Logistics, a company that DeJoy used to run and his family's business currently leases office space to, just signed a $120 million contract with the Postal Service. This deal could generate up to $23.7 million in rent payments to the DeJoy family's businesses over the next decade. If this isn't a conflict of interest, I don't know what is. DeJoy remains in office because he can only be fired by the Postal Service's Board of Governors, which currently consists of four Democrats, four Republicans, and an independent. Now, although Democrats gained a majority on the board earlier this year, two of the board's Democrats have sided with all four Republicans to keep DeJoy in office. Maybe that's because Democratic Postal Chairman Ron Bloom is a managing partner at Brookfield Asset Management, a company that has invested heavily in XPO logistics and from which DeJoy himself recently purchased hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of publicly traded bonds. Now, fortunately, Bloom's term on the board will expire this December alongside Republican board member John Barger. Their departures would allow Biden to appoint two anti-DeJoy board members next year, giving the board a five to four majority that can and should send DeJoy packing. With bustling holiday season fast approaching, there's no time to waste. Biden must quickly name his two nominees and the Postal Board of Governors must fire Louis DeJoy before the Postal Service is reduced to rubble.